Everybody, this is Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast, your host of the number one podcast coming to you live in America. And today I have Mr. Paul Wells hailing all the way from Colorado. He is absolutely killing it in the hottest space in residential real estate today. And that is called accessory dwelling units, otherwise known as ADUs, granny flats, mother-in-law suites, and among others other other unique names adus may be the hottest space today but paul built his first adu in 1990 so he got the experience the real estate investment class firsthand and it made a huge difference paul has been a full-time real estate investor for almost 20 years and investing in real estate for 30 years since working for tony robbins in 1988 paul has had a very interesting journey throughout his real estate career and his personal career to get here from a professional skier to working on a colorado dude ranch to actually being on an airplane in 9 11. he will tell you why that day is significant in his journey as a real estate developer and now coming to the stage the incredible the amazing Mr. Paul Wells of ADU Expert. Yay! Hi, Marcus. Good to see you. Great to be here. Love the energy. Let's make this thing rock. Giddy up. <laughs> I love it. Giddy up. Giddy up. Okay. Okay. Let's dive right in. And tell us, Mr. Paul, can you tell us about yourself a little bit? What's what's your story? You could you're a multi-talented individual and you could do absolutely anything. What inspired you to start your company and get get started in ADUs? Well, I've always loved real estate and I've always seen real estate as a great way to make a living and a great way to build wealth, and it still is today. Uh, anybody who owns a home today is certainly experiencing the uh, increase in equity and values that their homes are having. And, you know, Marcus, I don't think you're going to find anybody in a social security line saying, you know, I own too much real estate. So <laughs> I, um, I really think that real estate has been good for me. You know, it's interesting because I grew up in San Diego and my dad actually started a law firm there that became the largest law firm in Southern California. And had, I had a chance to go be a lawyer. And he said, hey, you just go get your law degree. We got a place for you here. You'll be a partner. You'll make all sorts of money. That'll be great. I said, yeah, but I have to do it from behind a desk, don't I? He said, yeah, pretty much. That was not for me. I have a ton of energy. I love the outdoors. I love being outdoors. And I like working with a lot of different people. And so real estate was just a natural flow for me. I did work in corporate America for probably – just about 10 years, had some great sales jobs, sales managers jobs, director of business development in some very hot markets, you know, like the um, natural language speech recognition. You know, when you, you talk to a computer, when you're on a phone and the computer asks you, hey, you know, are you interested in this? And you talk back in your natural language. I was involved in that early on. I sold space on a commercial satellite, but I've always been drawn to real estate. I just love it. And especially distressed real estate foreclosures, uh, buying second liens that are uh, undervalued, which I've done a lot of, done a lot of fix and flips, and have, and have really focused since about 2012 on the accessory dwelling unit space. And we, we'll get into that later, I'm sure. But that's, that's sort of my story. I have been full-time in it for almost 20 years. So I retired in 2016 and I stayed retired for about two weeks. As you and I were talking about earlier, I got bored to tears and so I got to go do something. And I, I was doing 180 a year or so just to stay busy. I just cranked it back up. And so it's been awfully exciting. I love doing it. I'm an evangelist for it. It is a fabulous way for people to get their homes to make them some money. 
to utilize their homes as a source of income without actually having people live inside their home with them. And so it's really exciting. I look forward to talking about this with you and sharing what I know with your listeners. Absolutely. That's impactful. So tell us, what are ADU? What are ADUs? Boy, that's a great question. And you get it all the time. ADU, as you said earlier, accessory dwelling units. So let's talk about a couple different types of ADUs. It is additional living space on a single family home lot property, if you will. So let's say you've got a, uh, you know, 10,000 square foot lot and you've got a main house on the front end of the lot. That means that's called a site map. And you have some space in the backyard, per se. You can build what's called a detached ADU, which is really a small custom house built in the backyard. You can build what's called a garage ADU, which you can build above a garage. Like we call them Fonzie flats. If you remember Happy Days, when Fonzie lived above the uh, Cunningham's garage, we call them Fonzie flats. And, or you can, if you had a big three-car garage, you could certainly, you know, lop off a third of it and build a tiny little apartment. And then there's called the, the junior ADU or small ADU, which is if you think about an unfinished basement in a house uh, or, or a basement, it could be finished, whatever it is, but you create a separate living space down in that basement. So really the definition of an ADU is a separate small living space. And when you say living space, you think kitchen, bathroom, um, it could be a studio or a bedroom. And, and that's it with a separate entrance. So really it is um, the ability to live on a property, but with your own space. I hope that makes a little sense. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a ton of sense. So what are some of the differences between an ADUs? Because when I think ADU, it reminds me of the craze tiny houses. What are some key differences between an ADU and a tiny house? So that's probably our the question we get asked the most because of what you see on DIY television these days. Uh, everybody asks about tiny houses and they, oh yeah, I want to build a tiny house. Well, tiny house has wheels. It's generally below about 300 square feet and you can move it on a trailer. It's actually classified as a recreational vehicle, an RV. And so a tiny house comes in on a trailer, they lift it off, they set it down or they keep it on the trailer. But legally in most jurisdictions, a tiny house can stay for no more than three weeks on that property. The other thing a tiny house doesn't have is plumbing. You know, they, they may have, you know, they may hook something up temporarily, but they really don't have a, a quote unquote, a traditional bathroom uh, as you would think about. And so uh, an ADU really does. An ADU has a traditional sort of bathroom hooked up to the main house's utilities. And that's the biggest difference is you can move a tiny house around. Our ADUs stay there with the property. So an ADU, and how much does it cost to build one ADU? Okay, so there you go. Second most popular question. Very good. <laughs> um, ADUs, depending on when you're building them and depending on how elaborate you want to be. So I talked to a guy today in Orange County, and he built himself a 525-square-foot ADU for $79,000. So that's about 160 a square foot. Something like that. It is small. It was basic, but it was nice. And it was a separate, it was a, a detached ADU or a DADU. Uh, you can go as high as, you know, as high as you want. I mean, it's just, it, they really are mini custom homes, Marcus. And so you can see them 200 to 250 a square foot. But when you, and people go, oh my gosh, I had no idea it was that much. Well, let's take a look at the guy that I talked to this morning. He spent $78,000 for a one-bedroom ADU on his place in Orange County. He will get, I asked him, I go, What's it, what are you going to be able to rent this for when it's done? He said $1,700 a month. Okay. You take $78,000 or $9,000, let's call it $80,000 and divide it by $1,700. You're looking at an ROI that pays you back for that dwelling in about five years. So the ROI on these is fantastic. That's major. That's amazing. You seventeen hundred thousand. That is 
epic, right? That's a huge return on investment. And you're not going to see that type of return. Um, on, well, you can, but it takes a lot more diligent. But th that's how much it costs to build this thing out. Is that what you're saying? 78000 that gentleman. For that for gentleman. Him it did, for him, it did. It was about 160 a square foot. That was on the low end. Um, and he, he ran into some problems, what we talked about, and I walked him through them. Um, you know, one of the biggest challenges that people that want so there's really three basic stages of building an ADU. There's the pre-construction or the permitting phase. That's the first part. That's, you know, an architect getting your plans done. And by the way, your architect is far more valuable to you than your contractor. You know, these, I, I see contractors saying, oh, we're ADU specialists. I get that. I understand you've built small houses, but you're basically still building a small mini custom house. Your architect is probably, I think, your key hire in building your ADU. They understand what to do. They have to run it through. The, they have to get their plans approved by the city, and it goes back and forth. It's a little bit like a ping pong ball or a tennis ball, and you know you have to – get your plans approved and it takes some experience. So I would I would highly recommend to anybody who's going to do this, find an architect who has some experience with ADUs. So you go through the pre-construction and permitting. A lot of jurisdictions, cities and counties have really opened up their um, permitting and their approval process for ADUs. California in particular, it's exploded in growth there. You have till the end of 2024 to take advantage of it. So if you are one of Marcus's California listeners, look into how an ADU would work in your jurisdiction. The best thing you can do when you're thinking about an ADU is go to Google. Google is your friend. So you would Google um, you know, Los Angeles County, Long Beach, ADU regulations, and start to see what's involved with getting an ADU permitted. So from there, you pick yourself a contractor and you start to do your construction management. You get all the uh, all the materials that you need and you get, you know, you pre-planning, you order, you know, your window packages, door packages, truss packages, rafter packages. Now, here is the caveat right now. And Marcus, I don't know if you know this, but a year ago, a piece of what's called OSB, it's basically plywood, a four by eight sheet of plywood or OSB was about $9 a sheet. Today, it's $35 a sheet. And it's because of supply and demand. You know, with COVID coming around, the manufacturing has slowed down. It's gone way up in price. So construction materials are far more expensive. Some contractors are far more expensive. Everybody's busy. But you can get one of these things done if you do it right in about six months, uh, depending on how good your contractor is, depending on how good your architect is. And so you go in, you basically go to a city, you bring your architecture plans in, you get it permitted, you get going. And within about six to six to eight months now, because of the slowdown, um, you probably have one of these done and ready to live in. Wow. Wow. This is incredible, y'all. You are not going to find this anywhere else. Mr. Co Mr. Paul Wells right now is spilling some great, great tea. Uh, and that's huge. We are going to take a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right, right back. Good day, podcast listeners. This is your boy, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen. Once you click the button, it will display three membership levels. Gentleman Gentry, which is our entry level, Duke Duchess, which is our season level, and the Emperor and Empress, which is our most sophisticated level, which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab. We will also be sharing polls, upcoming events, and interviews, as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly. Your support helps me find new and exciting guests to bring to the stage live. Well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. And if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. 
Love you guys. Bye. Hey everybody, this is Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast. We have the incredible Mr. Paul Wells of adublueprint.com and he is telling us, sharing with us something that's been around for ages and we did not know. If you missed it, scroll back, but he just explained to us the difference, the key differences between an ADU and a tiny house. Most people make the distinction and consider them the same thing and they are absolutely not. So if you missed that, go back and tune in and, and find out what this man's knowledge is incredible. And he is a plethora and he is the expert co- hailing all the way from Colorado, sharing with us and telling us how his company is changing the landscape literally. So Mr. Paul, you just explained to us how a- how ADU is different, how expensive or inexpensive they are and the return on investment. And so and that's major, especially what you're doing and educating and teaching others how to do. Um but it sounds like to me the money is made in the rental once you rent it out. Is that correct? Did I assume correctly? The money is made once after the six to eight months, once the property, the ADU is built out completely. Now I can get a return on my investment by renting out long term. Is that correct? So it is in in part and it is in part. So let's talk about what AEUs can be used for. To me, the short term rental market, there's a lot of them being built for short term rentals. But there are areas where short term rentals are not allowed, if you will. Like the gentleman I was talking to this morning, he's right next to Disneyland in Southern California, and his city will not allow AUs to be used for the short term rental market because of all the hotels there, you know. And I'm sure they lobbied and made that, made that law happen. Let's talk about some uses of accessory dwelling units. Um, you know, there, there's a name called Granny Flat or Mother-in-Law Suites. So there is a silver tsunami coming across our country. Our population is aging incredibly fast. Um, and we are getting more and more seniors over the age of 70 on a daily basis than ever before. So l- let me throw a scenario at you. Um, so, you know, you've got a husband and wife. They've got four kids. Mom and dad are getting older. They're 75 or 80 years old. They have, let's say, a big 4,000 square foot house that mom and dad have been living in, but they're tired of that big house. They don't need that much. They're tired of cleaning it. And so they, we want to do something smaller. So they, they build an ADU in their backyard, detached ADU in the backyard. Maybe it's 1,000 square feet. Mom and dad go live back there. Son and daughter-in-law and the kids go live up front. So you think about this, and I call this concept together with space. We have done this for a number of clients, and I, I, I could bring people on that would tell you stories that will bring tears to your eyes. It reignites the family relationship. It reignites the family bond. Grandma and grandpa are in the back in the little house. You know, the family's up front in the big house. And, you know, I don't know about you, but when I was 50, did I want my mom and dad to come live with me? Probably not. You Probably know, not. a full blown deal. Guess what, Marcus? Mom and dad don't want to live with you either. They want to do their <laughs> own thing. And so the ADU is perfect for that. They're close to their family, their relationships getting enhanced. Now let's go down another 10 yards or 10 years down the road. Let's say, what mom or dad has moved on, they've passed away and one's left. As parents get older, even both of them, but as parents get older, they start to need some care. Assisted living these days is about $5,000 to $6,000 a month on average. Well, what if grandma was still doing pretty good, you know, still does pretty good, maybe needs a little bit of help sorting her medicine in the morning or for the week, maybe a little help with the cleaning, maybe a little help with laundry. Maybe she'd like a hot meal. But so I call it assisted living light. You know, the family's looking after her, right? They've got an eye on her. Grandma's still loving life. She's got her family around her. She has not gone to an assisted living home at five thousand a month. You've built a detached ADU back there, and if if, if you go get a loan for two hundred thousand dollars, and you get three percent for ten years, that's about two thousand dollars a month. That is way better than five thousand dollars a month. And so the ROI on creating a space for an aging parent or parents is phenomenal. It really works well. So I look at that as probably being, to me, the most attractive thing about ADUs. 
But if you look at a millennial, 35 years old, what you were talking about, Marcus, the short-term rental, even long-term rental, you could put somebody in that little back house on a long-term rental. And so you're a millennial, you've bought yourself a house, you've got the site for it, and you have created a property, an extra dwelling, accessory dwelling unit that is letting your house make you money. And it's, it's awesome. Now, on top of that, when you go to sell it, every ADU I have ever sold, every ADU my clients have ever sold gets about $1.75 to $2 for every dollar you spend on constructing it. And here's the cool thing. They are usually under contract within a week because of that accessory dwelling in it. It is, it's phenomenal. I built one back in 2014 and uh, spent $500,000 on the main house and the ADU, and two years later sold it for $800,000. That's a $300,000 profit in two years, and because we lived in it for over two years as our primary residence, we got the capital gains right off. It's just, just everything positive about these. I cannot think of anything negative having to do with ADUs. That that doesn't sound negative at all. And as you were describing that, I instantly got the vision, right? Just like you said, it improves the family relationship. It can improve the family dynamic. So mom and dad are in the get the uh, ADU back in behind right. the house, behind the main house. But now we can meet at the pool, right? We can meet in the kitchen right. for breakfast every single morning or the nurse, right? Now, if mom and dad need assistance and we want, we don't want to put them in a community home or an assisted living Ha, huh, that's funny. In an assisted living community, we can create our own community in our own environment, in a safe environment with mom and dad back door. And the nurse can now she can just lift the tailgate. She can go back to the house to mom and dad, take care of what she needs to take care of. And she has her own space, her own privacy, her own bathroom, her own showers, and she and and, and the nurse can take care of her. And, and we're still close by. So if something happens, the nurse leaves prematurely or something happens, we're still home. We're still right next door and we can take care of it on the spot. So that's what came to mind. Yeah, no doubt. Let me tell you something cool that we did for one of our clients. So grandma's living back there alone. And they wanted just to know that grandma was getting up in the mornings. And because uh, husband and wife went to work every day, you know, seven, eight o'clock, grandma slept into like 10. And it's like, we don't want to call grandma. We don't want to ask her to call us every day. So I did some research. I found a refrigerator, one of the new refrigerators that had Bluetooth in it. Bluetooth hooked up to uh, the parent's phone, uh, both mom and dad's phone, not grandma's phone. So when grandma opened the refrigerator door, it sent a signal to the Bluetooth phone that grandma was up. Um, so, right? And so you, um, you know, grandma and grandpa have got a pattern. They get up at 930. By 10 o'clock, they have their breakfast, right? Well, you get your breakfast out of the fridge at some level whether it be cream for coffee or whatever, if that door didn't open up before noon, they knew something was wrong. And sure enough, about eight months later, it didn't open up before noon. They went over and checked on grandma, you know, came from work, checked on her at lunchtime, and she was in bed not feeling good, couldn't get out of bed, needed wow. some help. So these are the things that you do when you start to think outside the box a little bit. And that's what that's what I'm doing in ADU Blueprint. Um, I also, with my partner Jeff, we have started the National ADU Association, where we advocate, educate, and we're building an ADU community. Um, th this is brand new. Well, it's not brand new. ADUs have been around forever. This rise in the interest in ADUs is off the charts. It is the hottest trend in single family real estate. If you have your house on a separate lot, it's phenomenal, Marcus. How can people get on board with that association? Where can they find that? They can go to aduinfo.org. Now, keep this in mind. As of March of 2021, we're four months into starting this. It is not where we would like it to be, but you can definitely go find information there that will help you with your ADU planning, et cetera. So we are working at getting it up and rocking here. Um, but with you know all the stuff we're doing, it's like, where, where do you put your time and your energy, right? So- we're working on it. It's there. I love that. I absolutely love that. We have one more quick commercial break, y'all. We have one more. We got to pay some bills. We got to keep the lights going. We got to keep this party rolling. 
and we will be right back. This incredible man is changing the absolute game, and he's making me think. He's giving me some great, great ideas. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. I'm Marcus Norman, bringing fresh vibes to hot topics surrounding culture, relationships, business, finance, sex, dating, faith, and everything in between. Whether you're into passive income opportunities, trending topics and useful relationship tips, or dynamic guest speakers, there's something for everyone. You can expect all that and more every week. If you're down with this content, then consider joining our growing community by subscribing to Gentleman Style Podcast and smash the bell to get on our VIP list. Your support means the world. Thanks for watching. Link to my channel. Welcome back, everyone. This is Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast, and we have Mr. Paul Wells. Mr. Paul, forgive me, sir. Where is my favorite hat? <laughs> well, I need the I cowboy am, hat. <laughs> I am Colorado Paul from the western slope of Colorado. So if you see my picture on Clubhouse, you'll see me with my ever so hand, my ever so hand that boom, be up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I worked on. I mean, I've had this hat for 20 years, man. I have got more stories with this hat. I was starting to wear out just a little, just like I am. <laughs> but um, yeah, I love it. I love it. You look good, man. You look good. Thank you. Thank you for bringing my favorite hat. I appreciate right. you. We have a question from the audience and also our VIP sponsor, Ms. Shanique Henry. She asks, she, that is not the question. Forgive me. She asks, do you need permits from the state to have an ADU on your property? You do not need permits from the state. You do need permits from, you need building permits from the city and the county that you're in. So you have got to get building permit approvals. You got to get permit review. You got to get final design approvals. Now, I'm going to tell you something that you might not ever think about. Marcus, you know what the word NIMBY means? No idea. Not in my backyard. Huh. And so one of the challenges that we have discovered is that people in neighborhoods aren't real hip about ADUs when they first hear about them, you have, if you're going to build one, you've got to educate somebody. So you've got, so what we do when we go in is we go talk to all the neighbors. We bring them a drawing, a mock of what it's going to look like. They're afraid it's going to be some wild party time. And, you know, here's this ADU unit and all this, uh, all this um, traffic going in and out. It's going to wreck the field, the neighborhood. We take care of that. We go talk to them. We say, listen, we understand the concerns. Let us show you a little drawing of what this may look like. If you pick up a nail or a screw in a tire, you let us know. We'll get it fixed for you. And by the way, it's going to increase your property values. And it's going to increase the quality of life in the neighborhood for people. You know, there's not a... There, there is not an affordable housing problem in America, Marcus. There's an affordable housing crisis. And ADUs will take care of that. And we've actually had some neighbors that have come over and said, hey, when you're ready to rent that, will you let us know? We have someone that might like to go live in the back there, a child, a parent, something like that. And so once you get them over their fear, and, and fe all fear is is false evidence that appears real. They don't know about it until you educate them about it. And, and that really is a proactive step if you're going to do one. But yeah, you got to have building permits. You want to talk to the county. You want to talk to the city. And you want to go early and find out what they need. You're going to probably need a site plan, which is basically a footprint of the lot and the uh, where you plan to put the houses. But every community is going to be different. But all across America, Marcus, <laughs> City governments, county governments are opening up to the idea of ADUs in their community. So it sounds like it needs some buy-in. So great question, Shanique. Um, that's powerful. So it sounds like I need to get some buy-in from my community before I just um, up and, and build my, my ADU. I need some buy-in from the city, of course, but, but also my community that I live in. Well, and your HOA associations. Some HOA associations... Uh, may frown on it. So you want to check all of those areas. Absolutely. That makes sense. That makes sense. Woo, this is powerful. OMG. So are, are, the, are these units fully customizable? Because you mentioned the distinction between them is, and that's the distinction between a tiny house and an ADU. There's, it sounds like there's plumbing 
in my ADU? There's water, there's electricity. Um, are all these things in my ADU or what, how custom can they be? Well, they're as custom as you want it to be. Um, you can go on to Google and just type in ADU and go look at images. There are some phenomenal ones. But traditionally, with an ADU, you tie into the existing house's utility lines, into the sewer line, into the water line. You can put a submeter on it for electricity. Tell you what, you save a ton of money by tapping into that water line and sewer line because you're not paying what's called tap fees, new taps uh, when you're doing a development. So it's really very um, cost effective to do it. Now, customize, that's a, neat, that's a neat thing too. So for example, when we build our ADUs, when I first started uh, really getting into it, I went to the American with Disabilities uh, Act and saw the kind of things they needed for um, housing units for ADA. And one of the things that we do now is all of our stoves that you cook on top of, they're glass top stoves that have a flush mounted glass top. And we make sure that the glass top is the exact same level as the granite countertops. Over 50% of the injuries that happen to the elderly happen from burns in the kitchen. And so what happens is when they're cooking on the stove and they're done cooking, anybody, whether it be young or old, you can literally put on hot pads, slide the pot over onto the granite countertop and not have to lift it up and because that's where the burns occur. Or, right. uh, yeah, so it really, that's incredibly efficient. Let me give you a couple other tips, those who are thinking about this. Use eight-foot doors. Don't use seven-foot doors. That one-foot difference makes that little house feel so much bigger. If you can do vaulted ceilings in there and not have a traditional flat-top ceiling uh, like you'd see in a lot of places, that works. We, we started with pocket doors when we first started. Now all we use are hanging barn doors that slide on that big rail. Uh, roll in showers. All of our showers are, they don't have a threshold. They, the, the tile is done by our tile setter to where the water dips in. So if somebody happens to be in a wheelchair, this gives them um, access to a shower. These are simple little things that you can do up front that make this a much more attractive, um, custom home that's a powerful and, and how has your business how has the adu business um been affected by COVID 19 and the and the current crisis recession that we're in um construction costs for sure uh subcontractor labor costs for sure so it used to be i could go and get my window package i could order my window package and have it in two to three weeks we're talking two months now for a good window package same thing with a door package so it, it's extended our time. And so what that does is if we're borrowing money or my clients are borrowing money, instead of six months worth of interest, they're paying eight months worth of interest. Um, but construction costs for sure have just exploded. During the pandemic. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. How, yep. how We have one more question. Um, Ms. Shanika Tremaine um, asks, what is something you cannot include in an ADU structure? Wow. She caught you know, us off guard. <laughs> an elevator? <laughs> I, I don't know of anything you can't include in an ADU. I mean, we try to build porches off the back of our ADUs, so there's a nice place to go sit. I, You know what? I just can't think of anything that an ADU cannot have. It's a great question, though, but I've never been asked that. Great question. So it sounds like this can be literally a second home. It literally can be a second home. It'll have all the comfort. He, HVAC, heating and cooling, is there no limits there? No limits there. They are many custom homes. One of the things that we see from a lot of our younger aging citizens, let's say they're 65, 70, they love them. Have you ever heard the term lock and leave? No. <laughs> so lock and leave means they're living in their back house. They, they've retired. They want to travel. They lock the door and they leave and they go travel for a month or two weeks or whatever. It's just the flexibility is, is really great. The ease of it, the, it's their low maintenance. Um, if, it, if you are trying to rent one out, you can put a privacy fence up between the main house and the back house. Um, there's just, I mean, sky's the limit. And they're super fun to build. They're really creative. We'll go with our clients and they really get excited about the things they want to do in there. One of the ones we did down in Denver, the lady loved Alice in Wonderland. 
I want an Alice in Wonderland ADU. So we made the steps like piano keys. There's a little rabbit door on one of the walls we put there. It was awesome. I love that. I love that. How can my audience um, connect with you? How can we reach out with you, learn from you, and connect with you and grow with you? Um, because I can already tell there's there's a growing – this demand isn't just temporary. This is not just a limited thing. How can we reach out? How can we connect with you? Well, there's a couple ways. Um, if somebody would like to see a little video series, and when I say video, I'm talking 25 minutes. Um, and I, I put together five five minute videos on how to build an ADU, um, what you need to do, how you choose an architect, how you choose a contractor, how you work with the city, how you work with the contractor, um, and some of the do's and don'ts of hiring a contractor. Like you never get a contractor money up front. I don't know about you, I don't get paid until my work's done. So True. just real really simple ideas that will save people a lot of money and protect them and make them a lot of money. So you can go to the real estate investors lab.com real estate investors with a, a plural. The other one is, and I am. So one of the things, Oh, Colorado Paul is not as, and you and I were talking about this and laughing. I am not a technical genius. <laughs> I, I'm trying to learn how to put landing pages up and I'm trying to learn how to, to send emails out with information in them and that kind of stuff. But I've got a website that called ADU blueprint. ADUBlueprint.com. If you were to go to it right now on this day that whatever we are, the 20th of March, 2021, you're going to go, that guy's crazy. That thing's not working. Well, it's not working today, but I promise you within seven days from right now, it will be. So go back and see it. And I, we're going to keep providing a ton of information. ADUinfo.org is another great place. And we're happy to answer questions. And I love talking about it. I'm all over Clubhouse about this. And so it's just been a blast. And that's, I think, where you and I met. That's absolutely where we met. I love Clubhouse. And what's your name on Clubhouse? Um, I've got it. Uh, my name on Clubhouse. Oh, Colorado Paul Wells. Colorado Paul, Paul Wells. Wells. Yeah. Colorado on Clubhouse. Paul Wells. On Clubhouse. And it's interesting because all these real estate rooms that are looking for new ways to invest. And by the way, it's not just about real estate investment. If you are a person that is financially savvy, you're looking to enhance your finances, you're looking to enhance your net worth, I implore you to take a look at putting an ADU on your property. Um, the ROI is great. The increase in value is great. And it's and every jurisdiction is different. So for example, down in Texas, if you have an ADU on the back of a single family home, in Austin, you can separate the two properties and sell one of the two dwellings, the main house or the ADU. Um, in a lot of jurisdictions, yeah, right. In a lot of jurisdictions, you don't have to live on the property. So you could buy and have a main house rental and an ADU rental. In Colorado, if you're on the deed of trust, you have to live on the property. I'm sure there's other states and counties that are like that. But I, I can't I can't stress this enough. Every city and county's regulations is going to be different. And if they're not approved there yet, I was the first one to build one in my little community down in Denver. And I had to go for nine months back and forth with the billing department. They'd never seen one like this. So um, have some patience. Some cities and counties are far more progressive than others. But God, look into it. It is. It's really good. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Paul. We have to let Mr. Paul Wells go. He has a company and a business to run, but this, yes, I love that. This is absolutely incredible. Mr. Paul, I want to say for you, thank you for what you do, brother. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for giving back in this way. This helps me. This helps my audience grow. This helps us all get to a better place. And I look forward to, to getting you back on the show in the near future to, to grow with you. So this is exciting. <laughs> Anytime, Marcus, happy to do it. Like I said, I am an evangelist for ADUs. And so uh, I will just say from the western slope of Colorado, uh, Colorado Paul Wells, thank you for having me, Marcus. Uh, please go to the website, get some information. I promise your listeners, Marcus, I am not going to crush them with a bunch of spammy emails. We're just going to send information. I believe it. I know it. I know it. Thank you all, my audience, for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this message has served you. I hope this message has been impactful. It definitely was impactful and inspiring to me. And please like, share, and subscribe. We have to uplift and get this information out so we all can get to a better place and a better financial place. And for our family's sake, 
put our family in a better position to win. So like I always end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your families, and take care of business. This is Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast and Mr. Colorado, Paul Wells, ADUBlueprint.com, signing off. Love you guys.